We are back to wrap up the modded Xbox build. The first part of this project is linked in the description if you haven't seen it already. We take this non-working Xbox, repair some broken traces that were causing power issues, clean all the thermals, give it some new thermal paste, and finally hard mod the system by installing the Aladdin XT Plus 2 mod chip. Now if all you were looking to do was play burned discs, you could stop here, but obviously the bigger appeal is installing a larger hard disk and playing games directly off the drive. Today we're going to upgrade the drive and fill her up with games. So here I have a 1TB SATA hard drive with a SATA to IDE adapter. Now as for the games, I found pretty much the entire library of Xbox games on the Internet Archive at archive.org. All three archives put together were around 1.2 terabytes. And even on my gigabit line, I've only managed to download two out of the three archives over the past week. Now, in hindsight, I probably just should have gotten the two terabyte hard disk. I thought to myself, I could get the entire library of Xbox games or something very close to it on a one terabyte hard disk, but I didn't realize that all the games are compressed and they expand to about double their size. So I'm going to be lucky if I can even fit half those games on the hard disk, but it's going to be a good first modded build nonetheless. As for that SATA adapter, this thing was in bad shape. Cold solder joints, solder missing from like half these pads. I did pick a pretty cheap adapter, so I wasn't expecting the highest quality, but this is a little bit worse than I imagined. Anyway, nothing that a little reflowing can't fix. I do want this build to last a long time and not have any problems. And I'm always looking for an excuse to take out the soldering iron and practice my soldering. The surface mount components look really good by the way. It's just the through hole components that look really shoddy. It's like they had someone at the end of the assembly line soldering in the through hole components and they certainly did not give a damn. I ended up going over the through hole components one by one and about half an hour later I was pretty happy with how the connector looked. I read online that some people were able to do the SATA hard drive upgrade without upgrading from a 40 pin to 80 pin IDE cable. So out of curiosity, I just tried it for myself and it did not work. It would just crash on the Xbox Linux screen. The 80 pin cable I got was 18 inches long and it's just barely long enough. But if you carefully fold it the right way, it will reach. Once I attached the SATA adapter to the hard disk and folded everything in place, it ended up looking pretty neat. Technically, this concludes all the hardware work and everything else is in software. First order of business is to partition and format the new hard drive, so I just navigate through the menus and select disk upgrade. At some point along the process, it will ask for a pin code. I had to look that up. The pin code is AYBX. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. There's a lot of really good in-depth videos on how to go through every step of this process. So if you're really looking for step-by-step -step instructions, you'll probably find a better video than this one for that. I chose to put the entire one terabyte on just one partition. So later when we FTP the games over, that's gonna be drive F. And after all that's done, we can boot into our custom dashboard, Unleash X for the first time. When you navigate to the storage options in Unleash X, we're gonna see a hard drive size of just 123 gigabytes. And this is because the Aladdin mod chip ships with an old version of the Evo X firmware. So now the only thing left to do is to boot back into Hexen and flash the mod chip firmware with an updated version of Evo X. And now that the Xbox is modded, you can restart it with the gamepad, which is kind of cool. So navigating through the menu, I'll select mod chip flash. Again, there's going to be a lot of other videos that cover this step by step in a lot more detail. The one thing I will point out though is that for the Aladdin mod chip, you have to select a 256K BIOS, not a 512K BIOS. So even though this is an Xbox 1.0 and 1.0s will accept the 512K BIOS, we're flashing the Aladdin mod chip, not the Xbox. So we have to select the 256K BIOS. And if we navigate back to the storage section in Unleash, we can see the full terabyte. And we are done. This upgrade is complete. No reason to have the unit open. I'm gonna close everything up and start transferring some games over. And having the lid on will give me a more accurate representation of how hot the Xbox is gonna get during intense gameplay. 
I'm just gonna put in four screws for now and skip the two in the middle. I don't wanna disturb the stickers if I don't have to. Once I'm done testing everything out, then I'll put the last two screws in and we'll close her up for good. One of the tedious parts about this whole process is transferring the games over via FTP. With the Xbox's Ethernet technology, the theoretical maximum transfer speed is going to be 12 and a half megabytes per second. And I was seeing speeds between 10 to 12 megabytes per second on average. So how long would a terabyte of games take to transfer over? A little over 24 hours. And that's assuming I did it in one stretch and it was completely uninterrupted. In reality, I've been doing it on and off over the past week, and I'm about two thirds the way there. All right, enough already. How does this thing look? Guys, it looks awesome. Wow. I mean, I know I'm a little bit late to the party, but I'm so glad I decided to build a modded system and I can't wait to build the next one. I'm using a dashboard theme that looks a little bit like the Microsoft dashboard. I tried other dashboards, including XBMC, but I found it a little bit slow and clunky. I get that it can look a little bit more eye candy than Unleash X, but I want something fast, simple, and robust. But let me know if your experience is any different. This is obviously my first build, and I'm sure it's going to evolve a lot from here. Now guys, to say I've been having a little bit of fun over the last couple of days discovering some of these games doesn't even begin to describe it. Hooked up to a big screen TV with the volume blaring, I mean, you're not thinking about resolution and pixels, you're just immersed in the gameplay. I'm obviously familiar with some of these franchises from other systems I've owned or the arcade growing up, but I haven't consumed any of this content on the Xbox. If I had to pick my favorite Street Fighter of all time, it would have to be the arcade version of Street Fighter Alpha 3. But ask me again in a few months, we'll see. When the Xbox 360 came out, I wasn't really interested in consoles at the time. The only thing I played was World of Warcraft. But a couple of years later, I was still in college, I started working part-time, and I spent my first paycheck on an Xbox 360. And like everyone else, I started playing Halo. And now coming back to play the older versions after the fact, I mean, if you're into older games and you missed out on some of this stuff, definitely consider an OG Xbox build. You'll be glad you did. Well, thanks for sticking around everybody and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.